Today we are reading from Shishi Vilapa Kusumanjali, Ashila Raghunathas Kuswami, verse 74. Oh, Madhura Mukhi, sweet faced girl. When the wind carries your excellent bodily fragrance to Chandravali's handmade playbed, where Mukunda enjoys with her, Krishna finds a clever excuse to meet you on the shore of your lake. Radha Kunda Like a bumblebee leaving an inferior flower When will I proudly witness this Oh Madhura Mukhi Sweet faced girl, when the wind carries your excellent bodily fragrance to Chandravali's handmade playbed, where Mukunda enjoys with her, Krishna finds a clever excuse to meet with you on the shore of your lake, Radha Kunda. Like a bumblebee leaving an inferior flower. When will I proudly witness this? So, Gorasundar, I was talking in the beginning about the wind, which is now very active in the service mood in all Vrindavan. So, by some coincidence or connection through the hearts, also in this word, words, we can see how the wind is engaged in the loving service of Yuga Lakishwar. And in the beginning of words, Raghunath proudly is addressing Radhika, O oh Madhura Mukhi. Sweet faced girl. Ragunath, like Tulsi Manjari, is always drowning in the ocean of sweetness of Shimata Radharan, her Madhura's qualities. And because he's drowning, he's not only touched by this ocean of Mahabhav, but he's diving and drowning. Yes, yes, Guru Dev. Since we open the windows, the wind is uh, that the, we let the wind in, Guru Dev. You inspired Guru Dev to let the wind in. Okay, so we are in windy mood now. Let's see in which kind of direction winds will bring us. <laughs> so, so we can see here that this winds of Vrindavan increases the proudness of Manjaris because they know the secret behind the blowing of the winds and how much the winds are in the seva mood to help to increase loving pastimes. And through this 
increasing emotions. Radhika is already Madhura, but she is becoming more and more Madhura. And Manjuri is very, very proud to be so close to beloved Madhurya Swamini, full of Madhurya. Each part of body of Shimati Radharani is full of sweetness, Madhurya. Each emotion of Shimati Radharani is full of sweetness. So, this verse is glorifying the special quality of Shirmati Radharani among all, all other gopis. And in very poetic, little hidden, little sarcastic way by praising Krishna is showing these beautiful pastimes which will which will later be explained. So this wind is stim is stimulating the wind is stimulating wind is stimulating Yuga Laki Shore pastimes. And this wind is different than winds in Vaikuntha. Mm. On, on another Tirtas. Winds, winds is Udipan. Stimulation. <laughs> for loving pair for Yuga Laki Shore. So we can see each word from the mouth of Acharyas has proper place and explaining proper mood, proper seva and proper emotions. Mm. We can continue, maybe if someone wants to add something. It's such a nice example that in Vrindavan, everything is uh, aware, is conscious, what you just explained. And we also explained this this morning about the blue clouds, because of this I, again, I spoke about this topic, because they are servants actually. It's uh, a few days ago we make the example when uh, Swamini enters the Kunja, before she enters the Kunja, she was so eager to meet Krishna, but suddenly she changed the mood, stopped just in front of the Kunja. Krishna is eagerly waiting for her, and then uh, she asked the Manjari, why are you bringing me here? What is the reason? And uh, stay in Man, just from one moment to the other. And no one could break her Man. No Saki, no Manjari, Krishna, no. Nobody could do this. And uh, they all was helpless. And in that moment, the Holy Dham himself said, oh, let me think about this, what I can do. 
and done just that appears what we have now here so dark blue rain clouds coming and then a heavy thunder goes down and makes a heavy noise and in that moment swamini jumps in the arms of krishna of mohan and what is it the swoon was broken it's so beautiful and we can understand that there is nothing in the holy dam is unconscious and everything the trees the wind and the clouds and the thunder are in conscious and in service mood to our swamini to bring her together to mohan Kuranga Sunda, this is so nice. And you know, again, one more thing comes the wind that carries. Yeah. Saura Acharya are explaining, my dear, that all these stimulations <clears throat> are so intense in the form clouds are stimulating, mm, the wind is right. stimulating, right. the smell from the flowers. Wow. Uh, singing the birds are stimulating this beautiful parakya exchange of mood, love. So this stimulation brings not only happiness to Radha and Mohan, but it also brings astonishment wow. to the Manjaris. Without this spices, we can say spices, stimulations, Asto astonishment is not so intense, but when the spices are engaged to the full capacity, then astonishment in a loving couple, in the maid servants are just increasing and increasing, and everyone is bathing in rasa. So, thank you, Gaur Sundara, for sharing what you were talking in Vrindavan. Vrindavan is Vrindavan. Everything is connected. In the previous verse, Sri Raghunath perceived the Dana Leela in which he relished the sweetness and the beauty of Atishvari Radhika's eyes. Crowned with frowned eyebrows. When this vision vanishes, he laments. When will I see these eyes again? The deity is... Shoriji, please. Would you be so kind to repeat the first sentence, first line? In the previous verse, Sri Raghunath perceived the Dana Lila, in which he relished the sweetness and the beauty of Adhishvari Radhika's eyes, crowned with frowned eyebrows. So we can notice here that Ananta Das Babaji is writing. Adi Ishwari Radhika. And it's such a proper use of this word, Adi Ishwari, specifically in these words, when somehow this opponent Gopi is appearing, Chandravali is appearing. Baba is saying Radhika is Adi Ishwari. 
प्राइम सुप्रीम ईश्वर एंड ही इज शोइंग दैट थ्रू राधिका एंड कंफर्मिंग ऑल अदर गोपीस अपीयर्स बट दे आर नॉट आदि ईश्वर प्राइम beautiful swamini and we can see here that for krishna sometimes we say adi purusha supreme he is the first one and all other expansions are coming from him so in the same manner from radhika all expansions of gopis different wives in dwaraka even in vaikuntha lakshmi's everything and everyone is appearing from shrimati radharani mm-hmm. and not only that the loving pastimes between radha and krishna are adi ras this is the primary ras first rasa this madhurya and all rasas are coming from this primary rasa without this adiras madhurya ras loving pastimes between radha and mohan there will be no existence of any ras and shila prabhupad very nicely explaining chaitanya charitamrita how all these different rasas are actually present in this prime rasa so baba is here here is addressing radhika adi ishwari radhika because he is giving a commentary and he wants to establish the position of shrimati radharani above all all other sakis gopis and so on and so on and her sweetness is not possible to compare with anyone her moving the eyes her expression of love on her face on her in, in her voice in her glances it's not comparable to anyone because she is adi ishwar she is the one who is giving the others abilities to love they are not giving to her gopis are not giving ability to love to radhika radhika is giving ability to love to sakis to all rajavasis so this is the necessary to understand because then we can conclude very clearly that without radharani's mercy no one can attain anything in life not only krishna anything in life because behind whatever we are doing it must be some form of love and this love ultimately is pre- representing in personality of embodiment of love shrimati radha adi ishwari radhika sweet adi ishwari because only because of her krishna leave all other gopis and just going straight to touch her lotus feet to be embraced by radhika's lotus hands to be touched with her glance like a bumblebee leaving an inferior flower 
inferior flower, inferior, who, everyone is, all gopis are inferior towards Radhika, if we compare to Radhika. So when Acharyas are using this comparison, Bambi are going from flower to flower, yes, this is Krishna, who is always going to drink the nectar of the gopis. But when the main flower, the source of all flowers, is present, when he smell her flavor, her fragrance, then who, who cares for all these ordinary flowers? And Manjari is so proud to witness this. This is Manjari's proudness. And this is proper quality of proudness, which is necessary to relish rasa. Usually when the person is proud, it's really disgusted. But when the proudness is connected with the pure transcendental love, then such a beautiful quality is to be proud on my Swamini, to be marked by my Swamini. This is the sweetness of Manjari Bhav, proudness. I'm sorry, I... Radhi. Gurudev, help us. <laughs> Very nice. It reminds me of when Gurudev explained uh, when Antaranga Shakti become Vairanga Shakti. Yes. But I don't remember what he said about this. Maybe you can say again, Gurudev. Please, Gurudev. There was. <laughs> <laughs> Not How the Ranga, 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 Ranga. No. 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 But Suniti is also yeah, Suniti. very good. Suniti, yeah. Please take the chance. Yes. How about the It's off or on? You can hear? You can hear? It's on? Perfectly. Perfectly. Oh, Suniti Ji. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe. I am not so qualified. That's okay, but, practically. It's very good. <laughs> I'm hankering for to be also unqualified. I am in good association, and all I can say that we always come closer and closer to the subject. When we hear from Gurudev how it took him some years to go deep into the subject that was revealed to him by his Gurudev, Radha Govinda Das Babaji. And I remember also one time we were sitting here together and speaking that Balaram is the first ex, uh, expansion of, of Krishna. And Gurudev said, no, Srimati Radhika is, because she is his heart. And from her, everything else is manifested in that bath to serve. Mm -hmm. And I, ha I remember also another time, but that was only my own uh, feeling. I was meditating how when Srimati Radhika is manifesting all Vrindavan Dham and taking on all the forms, you know, to assist her beloved Mohan in all of his expansions also. She becomes Anangamandri, who is Nitai. 
So then I ask God if this feeling come to me that when Shrimati Radhika goes outside means, you know, expanding herself into all the different forms to assist her beloved. She is Ananga Mandri. And why our Nanga Mandri has also Shyam Kala? Because Shumati Radhika takes also like some qualities of, of Krishna's to go outside when she becomes a Nanga Mandri. She's serving in all different expansions. Like we know the song Nitai is Antare Nitai, Bahiri Nitai. He's everywhere, he's inside, he's outside. So for us, in the mood of aspiring to become a Dasi of Srimati Radhika, this bath is prominent that our Swamini, she is pervading the whole universe to serve her beloved Mohan. And she is taking on all the different forms to serve him. Therefore, she is not different from Ananga Mandri. And that is how the inner energy, the anti-ranga shakti, Krishna's ladini shakti, she is also pervading everything to serve her beloved. And so this is connected that Nitai, who is Ananga Mandri, who is also Balaram, is everywhere where, where uh, Chaitanya is because they belong together as an eternal principle of giving prema. And Gurudev was recently, I don't know in which class, explaining very, very deeply mm -hmm. that when they see the suffering of those souls who are bound in this material world, they are very sad because they want to give them their prema. So from this point, we can feel that this Antaranga Shakti is actually Shrimati Radhika uh, expanding herself in all, all different kinds of forms to serve her beloved. Like actually also Krishna is expanding himself in many, many different forms to serve Shrimati Radhika, or let's say, to serve all devotees with all different kinds of forms, whether it be in the spiritual realm or in the material realms, because they are not to be separated. It is maybe only we want to understand the Tattva Vichar, Gurudev was also giving this example. But actually, if we go into Rasa Vichar, we have different feelings. Mm -hmm. We see it not only from the logical point of view. At that point, logic is not applicable anymore. Because when we consider the oneness of Radha and Krishna, and that flow of their exchange and their Prem Seva, that has another dimension where they are, you know, exchanging roles, exchanging services, exchanging forms even. So that is more easy to understand when we consider that the Antaranga, the inner energy, Krishna's, you know, Ladini Shakti, who's giving bliss and only she giving all the highest form of satisfaction to the Lord can also permeate the whole universe and coming, you know, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu together with Nittai as a double package of Prem giver, which is unprecedented in this Kali Yuga. That's why we are so lucky. We get the double power of this Antaranga Shakti right now in this Otherwise, not so fortunate, Kali Yuga. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was, uh, you know, also our Jainanda Maharaj was uh, explaining very nice about this mystical 
oneness and difference at the same time of Radha and Krishna. Just yesterday, you were explained so nicely also to all of your disciples, this Premilas Vivata. That is also connected to that, I feel. No? So, <clears throat> my consciousness still, you know, is not ground in Vrindavan. By your mercy, I can more still go deep. The other day, Gurudev is saying, uh, not, not maybe Gurudev, actually before Gurudev is saying, actually this, this material world, we may think this material world is a very nasty place, suffering place, but actually it, it is up to our vision. If someone who has divine vision, even in this material world, also divine, because that person in the uh, natural natural position, mm -hmm. constitution. constitution position. So if we are in the mercy of divine pleasure giving potency, then we our eye open, then this material world also could be divine. We could see divine leader of Radha Mohan in this in this material world. So is this internal potency and external potency is one and also same times different because of in in a position in a, in a position we are in external potency of the Lord, then we feel you know everything opposite means we we see in negatively negative vision. But the Guru Dev like a Guru Dev, like a, someone who has divine vision could see everything divine because of due to influence of pleasure giving potency of Radharani. So this is very <laughs> mystical. <laughs> so we don't, we may not understand. So actually Radha Mohan does not go out Brindaban because they are always <coughs> Nitya in this Brindaban. So, but some or other, their divine desire, so to, to save foreign conditions, so then Rupa, uh, then sorry, then Radharani expand Ananga Manjari, then Ananga Manjari also expand Nityananda, Rama, Nityananda. So, and they give us divine vision. So this Nityananda expand our Guru Parampara, our Guru Dev, our Guru Manjari. So they are open our eyes. Then if we are fortunate enough, we could see, even in this material world, we could see Radha Mohan Nityarira. So that is only possible the mercy of our Guru Dev, Guru Manjari, and our Radha Mohan, especially our Shrimate Radharani. So I don't know anything I say a little bit. Thank you. In the previous verse, Sri Raghunath perceived the Dana Lila, in which he relished the sweetness and the beauty of Adishwari Radhika's eyes. 
crowned with frowned eyebrows. Brown, 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 brown. Aha, aha. So it's a form. It's not a color. I was wondering why brown. No, brown. When this vision vanishes, he laments. When will I see these eyes again? The deity shows herself once and then disappears again. Thus, Swamini plays hide and seek with her surrendered maidservants. Just as a human body may be carried to the shore by the flood, and again drawn back into the ocean by the ebb. Similarly, Sri Raghunatha's heart and mind are sometimes brought to Radha and Krishna by the waves of Milan meeting and sometimes drawn away again by the waves of Viraha, separation. This causes all the lamentations. Separation from Radharani is not like separation from the Lord. My vine-like body is burning in the forest fire of separation from you. Please revive me with a momentary nectarian glance. There is great bliss in this burning prayer. It is as burn it is a burning which is anointed with the rasa of Ananda. Viraha has been called a rasa, rasa syananda, dharmadvat. Rasa is blissful by nature. Hence, there is also great bliss in love in separation. Chaitanya Charitamrita E Prema Yara Mone Tara Vikrama Sei Yane Yeno Vishamta Ekar Ekatra Milan Only a person 
who has this love in the heart can understand its power. It's like the blending of poison and nectar. Loving. Maybe we can stop a little here because so many important points which can be focused on one point. And this is feeling of loving separation. And it's written here that burning desire, burning eagerness brings burning prayer. If there is no such a strong burning eagerness, loba, prayer cannot be so intense and so strong. Prayer, which our achar prayers, we can say in plural, which our acharyas are offering, they are offering it from their souls. It's not a prayer from the body, for the benefit of the body. These kind of prayers are religious prayers. They are nice, this is okay. But we are listening here about soul crying in the form of prayers. And this is Atma Krandana. Tears from the soul out of great want, out of great greed, are coming in the forms of prayers. These prayers are changing the heart, these prayers are melting the heart, and these kind of prayers are inviting Ishtadev to come in the heart. So we should learn by following our acharyas how to pray. We should learn how to practice Shravanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, Vandanam, prayers from those persons who are bathing in this devotional feelings, not mental, sensual feelings, but deep devotional feelings which are coming from the soul and spiritual identity. And another point is that we cannot learn this kind of prayers because we cannot learn <clears throat> this kind of feelings by our own endeavor. It must be given, infused in the heart from the heart of Rasik devotees. Then proper prayer will appear and these kind of prayers will melt the Sadaka's heart and attract beloved Ishtadev, in our case, Radha Mohan. So this following the footsteps is so crucial, so essential, and it doesn't require any qualification. It only requires desire and opening the heart to their hearts. Qualification can be obstacle. But 
when the heart is melting, then there is no obstacle for anything. And starting point is how to properly listen. How to properly relishing through the ears the sweet, rasic words of our beloved Acharyas. So we don't have qualifications. But by repeating with full emotions and connection the words of Acharyas which are there expressing, expressing of emotions, then we are practicing sadhana in the proper way. Sadhana is not waking up in the morning, chanting, doing this, doing that, or doing this. Sadhana starts when I know what is my goal. Then I'm practicing according to the others who attain that goal. How to open my heart and feelings and all other activities then stimulates these feelings. Then when I'm chanting, then when I'm practicing Lila Smarana, when I'm praying, emotions are appear becoming more intense and intense. And in that way, as I understand, we are practicing bhajana with attachment. It's not mechanical way. It's not theoretical way. Yes, we speak sometimes, like Sunitiji said, Tattva Vichar and this, yes, we have to do this. But practice is not from the point of Tattva Vichar. Practice is not from the rituals point. Practice is through the heart. And this kind of sadhana only brings proper results. So Raghunath, through his own example here, is teaching us sadhakas. You should feel at least a little bit separation. If you don't feel your own separation from Radharani, then connect yourself with me. Mm -hmm. And I will infuse you with my se separation towards Radhika. That's the mystery of this process. I remember Prabhupada once told to his very, very young boys and girls, disciples, he was talking about the importance of Sukritis, devotional Sukritis, pure devotional Sukritis. And they told him, you know, Prabhupada, you know us, look at us, which kind of Sukritis we have. We are ex-hippies, still, Still, we are hippies, we are naked, we are like uh, wild horses, we don't have any Sukritis. And Prabhupada said, yes, but I will give you my Sukritis. So this is the power of pure devotee. This is the way how he is changing the world and how he is changing the hearts of everyone. through infusing his love, his feeling of loving separation, and his joy when the Milana is meeting, he is infusing the hearts of loyal Shishyas, disciples. This is how I understand this instructions about importance of Sadhu Sangha. Sadhu Sangha Sarve Shastakoi. All the Shastras are advising Sadhu Sangha because through only honest, sincere, open-heartedly Sadhu Sangha these things, these spiritual pure emotions can be infused. Mm 
N not knowledge. Knowledge is not important. And this separation is a crucial point to feel, at least to feel the drop of this feeling. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Vipralamba avatar. <laughs> He's always diving in Vipralamba ras, in the mood of Radhaba, in the mood of Manjari Bhav, but always Vipralamba. So this is the mood. What should we do? <laughs> this is our destiny. We choose that. Here is also written that Swamini is playing hide and seek with the surrendered maidservant. Why is she playing hide and seek? Someone explain. Jananda ji, Suniti ji. Radhira. Yes, please, my dear. Uh, I didn't see you. Yes, Radhira. This uh, Viraha, it's the, it's the greatest mystery of bhakti. And the we don't talk about it very much, but the, the principle of the divine in bhakti is what Jainanda Maharaj mentioned, this relation between unity and, and difference, unity and separation. Because what does Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bring? Many things. The most important thing he brings is lamentation, separation. God becomes two, longing for being together. God becomes beloved and, and lover. And so it's the birth of, of missing. It's the birth of loving in a distance, biraha. And so we never get rid of this. This will always be there. And this bouquet of lamentations, Velapakus Majari, it's one prayer after another about the, the experience of being in separation and being loving. So we can never be done with it. It's the highest form of the divine. It's the core. I mean, think of all the Nitai Lila we never hear about Radha and Mohan being together. Not a word. We always hear stories about them coming together and going apart. There's never a scene of them being together. So the, the it seems like the the main pillar is this feeling of longing, of God as an experience of loving longing. And this is why, this is my answer to your question, Kishwari Deep. This is why in order to give to Lassi Mandari a little taste of this separation, she Radhika appears to him and then disappears, gives her a brief glance of the nectar, and then it's back to the poison. And this is the universal experience in bhakti. It's this lamentation, knowing what's, what is lovable, and then trying to love it. Thank you so much. Very nice. 
limitation is so strong in prema that even when Radha and Mohan are together, suddenly, although they are together, they feel that they are separate. And in that moment, they are relishing more rasa, more intense feelings when, than when they are in embrace of each other. So this is, the, like you said, mystery of lamentation. But this kind of feeling, lamentation, you can see how it stimulates. Mm -hmm. loving couple, but also lamentation stimulates to increase the feelings of the loving devotee. And then all of them, three of them, four of them, are relishing rasa. Madhuri. Blood. The heart of Sri Raghunath that is suffering from separation has gone once more to the king kingdom of Leelas. In his Varupavesh, he helps Vamini to reach the bank of Radha Kund to meet Mohan there. Prema Mai is so much in ecstasy that she must lean on Tulsi's shoulder while they rush forward. How wonderfully beautiful this is. Bumblebees are flying along with her moving lotus feet. How greedy they are to drink the honey from these lotus feet. Maddened by their fragrance, they kiss the ground wherever her footprints are beautifying it. This is so sweet and poetic way of Acharya who is explaining how Krishna is flying <laughs> all around Radhika. And he is using plural, bumblebees, mm -hmm. it means that he is everywhere, all around her beautiful lotus feet. He, and he is kissing the ground where these feet are stepping on. So this, is the way, this is the way how Prema makes Krishna dance, mm -hmm. by forcing him to fly. Because he's, he wants to relish from all sides and he's never satisfied. Because the flower of Radhika's love is unlimited flower with so many unlimited emotions. And he cannot stop flying. He is mad of out of intoxication and he is kissing the Raja Raj where beloved Swamini put her leg.
He defeats the golden vine. She defeats the lightning strike. The creator has created the limit of bodily beauty. How sweetly her waist bells and ankle bells jingle while she walks. Her gait defeats the loveliness of the king of swans as she leans on the shoulder of a girlfriend. Ananta Das sings. She has gone to the Nikunja forest to fulfill Shama's desires. In this way, Tulsi takes Prema Mai along to the Sanketa Kunja, trusting grove on the bank of Sri Radha Kund. Still Nagara has not arrived in the Kunja. Srimati waits for her Nagara in the condition of a Vasaka Sachika. Radhe, before we hear the explanation about this Vasaka Sachika, it's nice to repeat mm -hmm. actually that Radhika is Prema Mai. She is embodiment of Prema. She for Krishna. All her heart is focused on him. And she is going in Nikunja forest just for his pleasure. She is burning from desire to give him a pleasure. This is the pure love, purest form of love. She is not burning like an ordinary girl to satisfy her own desires and senses. She is burning to satisfy Krishna's senses and desires. So this is why she is Prema Mai. Inside, outside, everywhere is. We were talking just about this effect of Prema, Attaranga Shakti. Outside, inside, wherever you turn around Prema, you cannot escape from Prema. And we can see in the life of devotee, the prema is present from the beginning stage of Shraddha. Devotee on that stage cannot perceive and notice the prema. But how he has Shraddha? By his own endeavor? No, this is Kripa of Prema Mai. She is giving the Shraddha faith in the heart of devotee. Although this faith is still very weak, but it's very inspiring that he approached the sadhu. Prema is bringing devotee on the level of Shraddha, bringing him to the sadhu, Uh, enable him, Sadaka, to receive initiation in Bhajan Kriya, to overcome slowly but surely anartanivriti, to situate himself on Nishta. Without Prema, who can situate 
himself on the Nishta. Prema is giving one first drop in the form of Ruchi to devotees' hearts. Prema is going to the next stage of Ashakti to inspire devotee, to focus him, to bring him on the level of strong, passionate attachment. Only prema can bring someone to the point of attachment. Because this is not ordinary attachment. Maya can bring also to the attachment, but to the material things and material relationships. But prema mai, Radha, brings devotee to the attachment to the beloved Ishtade or to her lotus feet. And then by her mercy, ecstasy, rati, Bhav is blooming fully in the heart of devotee. And then it's not end. Prema brings devotee to the other levels, up to the kingdom of Mahabhav, if he wants, if it's his goal. So, Prema is everywhere present. Although we can notice it or we cannot notice it. Mm -hmm. She gives inspiration. She gives enthusiasm. She gives a passion at patient. Because Prema is passion at patient. Prema gives association. By mercy of Prema Mai Kripa, we have an opportunity to have Sadhu Sangha. So this is the glories of Prema, Mai Rad. In practical life of Sadakas, all Sadakas. Mm -hmm. Are they? Are they, yes. I, I see. I just want to add one uh, small point that we all know we have heard many times. But this morning again, Gurudev was making this point, so I want to repeat it or add it, that in the beginning we need first to assign to Krishna also, mm -hmm. because he is opening the curtain to his prema. And Gurudev again cited Shri Prabhupada's Gita in the 10th chapter that Krishna is helping us to progress if we assign with Krishna and then we can reach the ultimate goal and then the ultimate goal will be to be in the shelter of the pleasure-giving potency. Just that this morning again we heard this so nicely from Gurudev not to forget that it's all possible. By assigning with Krishna means to sign the contract. I want to be your devotee. I want to serve you. I want to go into the mood of Vrindavan. I want to be a rich Basi, servant of rich Basi, servant of the servant. And then Krishna actually will open this connection to Prema or to Srimati Radhika. And then we come to our normal position. <laughs> that is always so nice to connect it again, right? We don't forget the thankfulness to our Krishna. And also the point that Guru there is making with progress, that is... Slow. Yeah, you were there this morning, no? Yeah, you were there, Kishore. You yesterday, also. this morning, I was rascal, but yesterday I was there. <laughs> Very nice. So, Prema Mai is going to the Kunja 
And Nagara has still not arrived. And now will be an explanation of Vasaka Sachika, which is a condition in which Srimati is waiting for her Nagara. This is written in Ujvala Nilamani. A heroine who has received a hint from her hero to meet him in a certain trysting place who eagerly waits there for him and meanwhile decorates herself and the grove is called a Vasaka Sachika. The activities of such a heroine are planning the erotic games with her heroes. Looking out for him to come, discussing blissful topics with her girlfriends, and constantly looking out for girl messengers to come. Nagara is too late, and Tulsi looks out for him again and again. The Rasika aspirant devotees of Vrindavan should also always meditate on themselves as assisting Swamini in this way, always staying by her side. The aspirant should always float along on the waves of Swamini's happiness and distress. Radhe, Radhe. So this is very nice instruction for practicing Manjari Bhav because it's explaining that Devotee should be completely connected with Radhika's feelings and recognize in specific situations these feelings so that he is able to properly act. And here Rupa Goswami, for very precise, precise purpose, is giving explanation what does it mean how he calls it vasaka sajika anxious girl who is waiting for adarani who is do, uh, for krishna sorry who is preparing kuncha waiting for her lover talking with her girlfriends and she is completely restless and anxious and Manjaris are feeling this anxiety and anxiousness in Radhika's heart. Because they are connected. Like Gurudev say, they are shadows of their feelings, of their heart. With their heart and feelings, they are shadows of Radhika's heart and feelings. Mm -hmm. It's not separate. They are one. But they recognize immediately, now Radhika is the mood of Vasaka Sajika. Okay, I don't understand Sanskrit. I cannot remember. But I understand that she is very anxious. <laughs> 
And what anxious girl is doing? Oh, she's mad. She's running all around Kunja, speaking with girl, her girlfriends, looking, is she, he coming or not? Can I hear him? Can I see him? No, this is anxious person out of love. Mm. And this anxiousness is beautiful ornament of Shimate Radharani. And this is also stimulants which intensify her emotions for beloved. So everything is perfect in a perfect, pure love. Mm -hmm. All activities are pure and perfect without endeavor. Because they are charged with prema. And Baba is finishing this part small. Aspirant should always float on the waves of Swamini's happiness and distress. Always knowing her nature mm -hmm. in that moment. Because in the next moment is another expression of her love. So for that we need special, special special, special mercy. I feel like in this way, Swamini is also teaching us to look for her anxiously in our separation from her. Like Thank in the very. material world, this is the separation for us from our Radharani. And she's our teacher, so... We can also meditate on this to always what to do when this is there. We are in separation. There is no vision. There is no consciousness. Everything is in separation. So we can also try to remember in this moment to what Radharani is doing when she's in separation. You know, she's anxiously looking, waiting for some sign anything so it can also help to meditate on this he's in separation mood Raghunath is separation mood all the followers of Rad Rupa Raghunath are in separation mood very anxious in a burning mm -hmm. eagerness and sadhakas who are really sincere sadhakas will feel this race of anxiousness and then the heart will start to change slowly but sure thank you Ready. without being completely absorbed in Swarupa Vish these feelings cannot be experienced Although a person like me is actually living in Vrindavan, he does not have any experience. I am always absorbed in bodily consciousness. Not even in dreams, I think of myself as Radha's maid servant. There's no other way than surrender. So this is another lamentation. Another kind of passing emotion in devotee's heart. 
In one way, he is lamenting for Radharani. And another way, he is lamenting on his misfortune and condition state of life. And Baba is very nicely and clearly is speaking. Because someone who really have a bhav, who really have a prema, he also have this kind of feelings and limitation. And this brings him to the next level of devotional life. It's not negative emotion. Because it's not connected with materialistic mm -hmm. persons, subjects, and so on. This kind of lamentation is connected with Radharani. And this is the sign of burning desire to attain Radha. Mm -hmm. Rupa Goswami is saying, I'm such a fool. I simply don't know how I dare to attain that goal. But I always remember your compassion. And only your compassion can bring me out of this conditional state of consciousness and life. Because it's so difficult to live like a conditioned soul. Mm. So these kind of lamentations as we should properly also feel. It's not negative. What mm. I'm doing in Vrindavan. I am living in Vrindavan. I also always want this and that. Yes. This is our homework on one side. But on another side, this is the sign of devotee who understands his misqualifications mm -hmm. and misfortune, bodily consciousness of life. And he is praying, crying. And this kind of consciousness also brings him on another level, more intense love. This is the see, seek and hide. Mm. Hide and seek. Mm. Hide and seek. Sorry. This is also the hide and seek mood. Mm. Not only when Radhika just appear and disappear. She disappear from my mind. She disappear from my heart. She disappeared from my consciousness. I want to bring her back. Mm. We always think that she has to appear to us or she doesn't appear. No. She, she is appearing in different emotional moods. And Baba is concluding, there is no other way than Surrender. Mm -hmm. I gave diagnosis for the sick person and I'm giving the medicine. Please take it. Mm So is it right that in this way, when Raghunath Das is praying, or this was Baba was saying, that not even in dreams I think of myself as Radha's maidservant, when you explain that this is not negative, this is actually the surrender that I understand my condition. Yes. Only someone who understands his condition and accepts his unfortunate position 
really from the bottom of the heart can try to do something to get rid of that. But if we don't accept the burning forest fire of our conditioned life, then our surrendering will not be complete. Mm. This will be negative. This will be negative. And depression. Mm. But when we are thinking, I am so low, I'm unqualified, but I want that, then this is the positive. Mm. As I understand. I don't know what Guru Dev is saying. I don't yes. have any realization. But if Guru Dev can help us. Maybe I can ask one question, Guru Dev. Now we were speaking again about this hide and seek that Radharani is playing with her surrendered maidservant. And uh, I saw, like, I understood from what Karanga Sundar was explaining that this hide and seek is Radharani's kripa to help her maidservant to come out of this ignorance where they want to come out. But also, this is not for to serve the maidservants, but it is to help, to have more maidservants to help her in her service to Mohan. It's my question. First we have to fix ourselves from hide and seek. Then I can help others, my servant, that they can be, I, we can help to prepare them for the service of Radhika. Mm. She is expecting from her maid servant that I don't seek, many will stop, many will help me. And deviate from her meditation in Siva. Can you repeat? There was a cutoff. Meditation and Seva. From the meditation and Seva from Swami. We she hides seek that we develop more greed for that. Mm -hmm. And we also hide and seek because the mind goes in different directions. We are hiding also from her. So mm -hmm. this is also we have to improve it. Totally, we have to be loyal in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Ever try to bring my mind in different subjects. Although my circumstances is sometimes favorable, not favorable. But this practice has to be go on and on to fix it. Beautifully, Goranga Sundar is explaining. Beautiful. Thank you. 
I don't know what I'm talking about. But... This is very beautiful to be more conscious to my in her devotion and in, in, in the lotus feet of Swami. No other desires. More No voy a hacer ninguna pregunta. No, she has one question. Sí. Lo puedo traducir. Puede preguntar. No, I cannot hear anyone. No problem, go on. Go on. Yes. Gaudiya Vaishnavas should take exclusive shelter. Exclusive shelter. Of the lotus feet of the gopis. Oh, mind, the essential thing is to take exclusive shelter of the lotus feet of the Braja Gopis. This was from Thakur Mahashaya. And now Sripad Prabodhananda Sarasvati says in Radha Rasa Sudhanidi, O Shri Radhe, when can I live in Vrindavan in total devotional anxiety? Shri Krishna is late for his appointment and Swamini becomes more and more upset. When the innocent beloved did not show up for a long time, the heroine becomes very anxious out of separation from him. In that condition, she is called an Utkantita Nayika by the knowers of Rasa. Her activities consist of a burning heart, shivering, speculating about why he does not show up, illness, shedding tears, and speaking about her own situation. The Mahajans describe the lamentations of an Utkantita as follows. I made the bed for my lover and strung a flower garland for him. I prepared betel leaves and I lit the lamps. 
I made the bower house very beautiful. But oh, my friend, all this will turn out differently. I will not meet my hero, who is an ocean of attributes. I decided my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law to come into the deep forest. I'm sorry. I deceived my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law to come into the deep forest. And with great effort, I decorated my beautiful, youthful body to meet my lover. I'm looking down the road for him to come, telling my mind that this crown jewel of relishers will certainly come now. Thus sings the wretched Candidas. Krishna, while on the way to meet Radhika, had met Shaibya and Padma, the girlfriends of Radhika's rival, Chandravali, who had taken him to Chandravali's kunja, where a bed of jasmine flowers made by Chandravali's own hands was waiting for him. When she Radhika, waiting in her own kunja, became desperate, the wind of Vrindavan thought to himself, let me see what I can do. And became Radhika's servant by carrying her sublime fragrance into Chandravali's kunja and straight into Madhusudan's nostrils. Shamasundar became startled, suddenly got up from Chandravali's handmade bed of flowers and told her, Dearest one, I completely forgot. My mother told me to do something for her, and I just went off without finishing that duty. I have to go right now. Naive Chandravali, seeing Krishna's anxiety, said, Go and come back as soon as you've finished your duties. Our hero then promptly followed Radhika's excellent fragrance, like a bee. Madhupam Eva, who leaves all the other flowers to search for a blooming golden honey filled lotus flower. That is the glory of her exclusive love. Radhe. I cannot resist. Everyone is on Radhika's side. Everyone is taking Radhika's side for her benefits. And it's so nicely written here that even wind is making plans to bring Krishna to Radhika's kunja. Devotees of Gaudiya Vaishnavas doesn't want even to remember Chandravali's name. 
this opposite gopi. They don't even want to go in her place, village. They don't want to hear her name. No, because she is opponent of my Radhika. She is giving good pain to her. But why she is mentioning here? Because Gaudiya Vaishnavas wants to celebrate supreme, sublime position of Srimati Radharani, victorious position. And because of that, they are mentioning her name, Chandravali's name. But just to establish even more Radharani's position, like a Jaya Shri. Mm. And become Other proud. And becoming proud. Not because they are glorifying opponent Gopi and this womanizer who is always doing some nonsense. No. But rather to show everyone how Radhika is so important that even Krishna is like a crazy mad bumblebee is always flying, flying, flying around her. And always ready, always ready to give up all other flowers. This is the only reason why devotees are mentioning this opponent Saki, her name, to glorify Brother Rani. The Adi Ishwari. Adi Ishwari, yes. Mm. Maybe it's time to stop. Very nice meditation. Dadi Radhi Gurudev, thank you very much.